Hello there, my friends. After a long break, we are together again. Let's begin with lab 6. Now we have two questions. In question 1, it says find the minimum of the given array, and for question 2, it says sort the array in the ascending order. I will simplify these two questions into one single question and also a single program code. Let's look at it. Here is our program code. If we general overview our program code, we simply define our players. Here is the length of the array. Here is our mini variable. And here is our array as integer. And this for loop is for taking to array inputs. And this line is for taking to menu option. And here is case 1 for implementing the question 1. And case 2 for implementing the question 2. Did you notice the const keyword in here, in line 4? It is very important because if you don't use it, it's simply give an error at the size of the array because the array length should be constant unless you use calloc, malloc or any kind of specialized functions. Because in the traditional style you cannot change the size of the array dynamically. That's why we are using const keyword in here. And this is a constant integer which equals to 5. And when you look at the line 5, there are two variable integers as menu and array. Note that array itself a integer variable However, its length is constant integer. Don't forget that. And in line 10, we are using scanfs for taking the array elements one by one. And let's run our program code and see what happens. I'm building the solution. It succeeded. And let's debug. I'm debugging it with step into selection. I'm pressing F11 button in order to run the program code step by step. I press F11 button. And here the yellow arrow is showing the next statement that will be executed. I'm pressing the F11 button again. Now it wants us to input the array elements. I just want to pass through all the steps. That's why I'm putting the breakpoint in here and continue the program. Debug and continue. Now, how can I check the elements that I've entered? It's very simple, by moving my cursor onto the variable array. As you can see, it shows the numbers that I entered.
the order is very important because this minus 23 corresponds to element 0 and this 8 corresponds to element 1 and it goes on like this now it's asking for the operation I'm entering one for finding the minimum number of the array, so I'm entering one. Now this switch statement will check the variable menu, and since it's equal to one, it will range to case one. We have defined the variable min as integer. We then assign the element 0 of the array into the integer variable min. Now min is equal to minus 23. And until this for loop will run, in order to watch the variables, I right click on them and add watch. Add watch and add watch. Now please check the variable i. It equals to one, and by that we are checking the element one of array, which equals to eight. Is 8 smaller than minus 23? No. Then don't enter the if statement. Now look at the element 2 of array, which is equal to 9. Then don't update the minimum value. Don't update, don't update. And with that, the most recent value of the integer min is equal to minus 23. And show the most recent value of the integer min. Now let's run our program one more time. Since we have a breakpoint at here, we don't need to run our program step by step. We just start debugging. Okay, I'm entering the numbers. 50, 0 minus 37 and maybe minus 1 ok, now let's choose the operation I'm entering 2 now it will branch to case 2 Now we have no business with this integer min, so we delete it from watch. We have business with j, so I'm adding it to watch. And we have business with temp, so I'm adding it to watch also. Now please concentrate on these four variables, especially watch carefully the array and temp. I'm pushing to the F11 button. J is equal to 0, and 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, and that means the element 1 of the array. 
And since j is equal to 0, that means the element 0 of the array, it checks if the element 1 uh, is smaller than element 0. Element 1 is equal to 0, element 0 is equal to 50. Yes, 0 is smaller than 50, so that if statement will work. This element temp will temporarily store the element 0 of the array, which is 50, and this 0 is overwritten in the element 0. Now we have two zeros. Now that 50 will go to the element 1. Now what we have done until now, we have just swept these two elements. These three lines belong to a swapping operation. Now let's go over it faster. Now check 50 and minus 30. Should we swap them? Yes. So we are swapping them. Now look at 50 and 7. Should we swap them? Yes. We have swept them. Look at 50 and minus 1. Yes, they are swept. Now we are repeating the process. Look at 0 and minus 30. Should we swap them? Yes, they are swept. Now look at 0 and 7. Should we swap them? No. They have stayed as it is. Now look at 7 and minus 1. Should we swap them? Yes. And what about 7 and 50? No. Now, as humans, we understand that we have sorted the array correctly. However, the machine will not see it. So, it will repeat the process over and over again until the variable i reaches the number 5. After that, there will be no need for sorting. And after it finishes, it will give us the most recent results. Okay. It says the element 0 is equal to minus 30. And element 1 is like that and the remainings as shown. Okay, that's all folks. Thanks for listening. Take care and see you in the next lecture.